Sponsored by Webull. The future is vastly more exciting and interesting if we're a space-faring civilization and a multi-planet species than if we're not. You want to be inspired by things. You want to wake up in the morning and think the future is going to be great. It's about believing in, in the future and, and thinking that the future will be better than the past. And I can't think of anything more exciting than going out there and being among the stars. Space, the last frontier for mankind. Exactly 60 years ago, the entire world was watching a race to the moon begin. And a few years later, they watched the first humans set foot on the moon. The last human mission to the moon was Apollo 17 in 1972. And since then, we haven't sent people to the moon due to a variety of reasons. NASA's budget cuts and politics were among the major reasons why manned missions to the moon haven't been carried out since then. But now with Elon Musk stepping into the picture with his company SpaceX, launching a rocket into space has never been cheaper. His ideas and new technologies are bringing permanent human settlements on the moon and Mars close to reality. In this video, we're going to explore how Elon Musk's master plan to colonize the moon and Mars will usher in a new space era, and how I think his other companies such as Tesla and the Boring Company might play an important role together with SpaceX. But before diving in, let's get plugged in. Elon Musk is now perhaps one of the most well-known people on the planet. He has made generational wealth with the companies he started. Everything he has done is to advance humanity forward towards sustainable energy and to make humanity a multi-planetary species. Both Tesla and SpaceX have tackled these problems head on and are currently on their way to fulfill these promises. And thanks to SpaceX, launching a rocket with a large amount of cargo has never been cheaper. And once Starship is ready for its first mission, the price for launching a fully reusable rocket with a large cargo space will come down even further, paving the way for the next space era, commercializing space like never before. How this will look like we can only guess and imagine, but those days are not too far in the future. Companies that could not afford to launch a satellite before are already launching small satellites into Earth's orbit with SpaceX due to its affordable price tag. With Starship soon in the picture, more companies will gain access to space travel. Here's the really, really important fundamental point. Let's look at the launch cost. The order reverses. While I'm sure many new industries might emerge from this, I want to focus on what Elon Musk's companies have the potential of doing if they all decided to work together. SpaceX has a clear vision of how they plan to colonize Mars and make permanent human settlements on the Red Planet. But before we send people all the way to Mars, there's another celestial body much closer to us, the Moon. And though it's been about 50 years since humans visited the Moon, we still don't have any type of permanent settlement there. And it's, it's 2017. I mean, we should have a lunar base by now. What the hell's going on? We can probably agree that it's high time we go back to the moon and this time to stay. The next manned moon mission is planned by 2024. SpaceX won a $2.9 billion NASA contract to send humans to the moon. Together with NASA's Artemis program, the plan is to build a lunar base on the moon's south pole with a permanent human presence. This would then serve as a platform to send humans to Mars. But for a permanent settlement, you first need to have certain basic necessities figured out before having a permanent human presence. Things like sheltering from solar radiation, temperature fluctuations, oxygen, water, and food. Most of these are not even an issue today as companies and industrial partners have been working on these solutions for years. For instance, extracting water that's already available on the moon and now even able to 3D print structures that provide shelter from the radiation and temperature fluctuations. If we can successfully use automation and resources from the moon to build safe structures for shelter, power generation, infrastructure, and lunar vehicles won't be too far behind. And this is where I think things could get very interesting. But before I go any further, a quick word from our sponsor. Webull has just announced a new limited time offer to get two free stocks. You will get one free stock valued up to $300 for just opening a new account, and another free stock valued up to $2,000 with an initial deposit of just $5. Earlier, you had to deposit at least $100 to get the second stock. Now, with this limited time offer, which will last until July 20th, 2020, 
2021, you only need to deposit $5 to get the second stock. So what are you waiting for? Click the link below to get your free stocks while you still can. And now, let's continue with today's topic. To operate a vehicle on the moon or even on Mars, you'd need one that doesn't run on conventional fuel. To burn fuel, you need oxygen. And since there's no oxygen on the moon or Mars, internal combustion engine vehicles will not work. So you need other ways to power a vehicle. The rovers we've sent to the moon and Mars that still operate today run on battery power. They charge their batteries using solar panels which enables them to stay operational as long as they're able to collect sunlight or until they break down. Now this same concept can be used with bigger vehicles with bigger batteries. Here's where I think Tesla has the opportunity to work together with SpaceX in designing a vehicle that could operate in difficult terrain, one that would be completely sealed and have enough oxygen on board for several hours, one with a large enough battery pack to last long enough to do whatever it needs to do within a limited time window. In fact, I think the battery pack size wouldn't really be an issue since the vehicles wouldn't really need to travel long distances, at least not initially unless the vehicle has equipment and tools on board requiring a lot of energy. If the vehicle is operated by humans, then the amount of oxygen on board the vehicle becomes the primary factor to limit the vehicle's use time. Automated vehicles, of course, wouldn't have this problem. While SpaceX or Tesla have not confirmed a lunar vehicle, artists have shared their vision of how they imagine, for instance, a cyber rover to look like. Elon Musk has been calling the Cybertruck a vehicle that can survive even the apocalypse, with a little modification to make it completely sealed, the Cybertruck could perhaps serve as a great platform for a cyber rover. Tesla's battery packs are already used in SpaceX rockets. It's not hard to imagine the two companies working more closely together on other projects. And with the industry now working on better and more energy-dense batteries for electric vehicles, the time for space vehicles is here. Not literally space, but you know what I mean. Power generation is another thing we can now solve with solar panels as efficient as close to 50%, according to scientists at the National Renewable Energy Laboratory. Only the space industry has access to such high-efficiency solar panels. The most efficient commercially available solar panels today have about 21% efficiency. And with Tesla's mega packs, which are mostly used for grid-scale solutions to store a large amount of energy, this combination could provide the solution for sustainable energy on the moon and even on Mars. When it comes to infrastructure, I think Elon Musk's boring company could provide a solution that could not only build underground tunnel networks, but also help in building underground habitats. The benefit of having an underground transportation infrastructure is that you're shielded from solar radiation, extremely high and extremely low temperatures, and of course, from meteors. Here on Earth, we don't have to worry about these things because we have our amazing atmosphere and magnetic field to protect us from all of the above. The moon doesn't have an atmosphere, and the atmosphere on Mars is a lot thinner than the one on Earth. It's hard to imagine sometimes that without these few things that we seem to take for granted, life on Earth would not exist. So let's take a moment to appreciate having this amazing blue marble floating in space giving us the opportunity to exist. Now, when it comes to communication and the internet, Elon Musk has this one covered as well, with his Starlink satellite network that will soon provide high-speed internet in every part of the world. A similar but much smaller in scale Starlink satellite network circling the moon could provide high-speed internet to the lunar base. Mars, on the other hand, is too far for this to work reliably. Due to the distance, there will be a significant delay in the signal. Depending on Earth-Mars, orbit, the communication delay can be as low as 4 minutes or as much as 21 minutes. I think other methods might turn out to be more effective. Quantum entanglement seems like one that might be a potential candidate. Quantum entanglement occurs when two particles are linked together no matter their separation and distance from one another. Although these entangled particles are not physically connected, they can still share information with each other instantaneously. Einstein famously called entanglement, quote, spooky action at a distance. While many would argue that nothing can travel faster than the speed of light, quantum entanglement seems to suggest otherwise. This theory has been successfully tested and proven to exist, we just don't know enough yet to harness its potential. Whatever the case may be, the future has never looked as exciting as it does today. Once permanent elements are fully operational, who knows, maybe space travel to the moon and back could become a common thing similar to what air travel is today. And eventually, Mars would also become a common place to visit or maybe even to settle. Would you travel to the moon or Mars if given the opportunity? And would you consider settling in if it was safe to do so? Let me know in the comments below. 
Thank you for watching EV Source. Keep charging ahead and I'll see you in the next one. Stay safe and take care.